Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode on the Hermitcraft server. Hope you're all doing well. I am certainly feeling much better, much better than I was last week when I was ill. And today we are actually going to be starting the first of three projects. Now the first one is something that we've actually already started. If you remember this, this is the horse speedometer. We were doing this quite some time ago and I have been meaning to come back here and I've kind of been putting it off and now I think is the time to come back here and finish this project because the other two ones that I want to be starting in the next couple of episodes are linked to horses as well and there's a horse over here and I have no idea whose horse this is but I'm going to ride it <laughs> have a little ride around this one looks like it's got quite a few hearts as well but this project right here is pretty much finished there's not a lot we need to do to this so we might be doing a few other things this episode as well but in the next couple of episodes we'll be starting some new projects revolving this but this is the horse speedometer the idea here and I think an enderman has been here and placed a block but you race from one side all the way to the other and I have no idea if that thing was reset and ready and when you get back over to this side you know the redstone clocks whizzing away while you're traveling along and then you can convert the amount of items it puts into this hopper which is down there on the ground and we should be able to access this I think what happens when I right click okay so I don't think it was reset when we started it let's do that again just so you can see it anyway but the amount of items in that hopper translates into a score and when I was last over here I had some signs explaining how to use it and then I removed the signs and I never put them back up so the whole time this thing has been here no one has really been able to use it so I think this thing's now ready we go across the light comes on on the right that's good you can hear a little bit of redstone clicking away over there and then when we get to this side another cool thing you can do is walk straight back over this won't break the redstone or anything like that and then we can check the amount that we have and then we can take that and we can calculate this horse's speed which is something I think we will do in a little bit but I want to talk about the changes and things that we need to do here first of all so let's go drop this guy back into his little shelter and I'm out here. <laughs> that's uh, that's interesting. That was quite a few blocks, wasn't it? We think we spawned on top of this one. Anyway, <laughs> so totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> right, things we need to do here. This racetrack, a lot of people, and I tried to explain it in episode once, were complaining about the soul sand, saying it would slow the horse down. Now the deal here is that the horse is bigger than one block it's one and a half blocks so if it stands directly above the soul sand it's also standing on the edges of the blocks around it and therefore with the soul sand being lower the slowing effect doesn't affect the horse so at no point does the soul sand here ever really affect it but the thing that people were commenting about with this is that this is supposed to be a racetrack you know for measuring the speed of your horse and it kind of looks like a, a dirty muddy path so I think we should change this that's a good idea we're gonna leave it all dirty and muddy on the other side but this area right here needs to be nice and clean so we're gonna change up the material that this is made out of and then we're gonna try and finish this tunnel as well because once we've done that there is not a lot else around here that needs doing really we've got a couple of horse stables maybe we're gonna do a little bit more you know different materials in this area just here just a bit of tidying up and polishing up but the main thing is the tunnel now a couple of episodes ago we made the little storage room down in Hermitcraft and I think the pattern that we had there was really nice and perhaps we could use that here we could have some alternating wood logs on the outside and then on the sides here we could have some wood logs going up some clay in between and then we could have an arch that goes across for the ceiling now it's going to be quite a big building job as well actually because this thing goes back a fair way um, but we could do a section of it now and maybe I could finish it off another time I'm just thinking about how much time I have to do all of this um, hopefully we can get it done but I think the first thing that I want to do here is sort out the racetrack so I'm going to figure out what material I want to build this out of we're going to rip up all of what we have here and put down something that looks a lot cleaner Right as I start recording, it starts raining. You know how this game works. Ah, oh, it's, it's annoying. <laughs> so, these iron blocks that we have right here, they look okay, don't they? It's very clean texture to work with, but it is a little bland and a little bit of a contrast from the kind of naturous overgrowth that we have around here. So I'm thinking maybe this isn't the best texture to work with. However, these redstone lamps we're going to put in so we don't have the torches. We're going to space them five blocks apart which means that all the blocks around them will be lit so we don't have to spam any torches down anywhere else 
and yeah I just need to look for another texture I think what I'm going to do is go into creative mode because you can just go through the menu have a look at what you think's good and then come back here but I think we're looking for something that's slightly textured maybe even a couple of materials and we create a pattern or something like that as well but for now I don't think these iron blocks are really going to do it do you know what I think this is going to work I decided to try something a little bit less bright but still kind of have the clean texture and stone is that block you know it's grey but if we mix it in with a little bit of stone bricks it just allows us to add in a pattern and kind of break it up a little bit because there is a lot of grey going on here but this is actually really nice I like it it's it's stone and it's not one of the greatest textures or most interesting but if you use it right it does look pretty good and so let's just fill in a little bit more here so you can see what the pattern is we have the redstone lamp every so often and then we have between those um, a stone block then stone bricks and stone and on the side three stone bricks like that and it works really well plus these are in lines in the direction that you're going so it's it's quite nice how it works I like it <laughs> anyway I think we'll do a little bit more and then just have another look double check that we like this but I think that is going to be our pattern for the racetrack here and I called it a racetrack it's a speedometer there we go that is awesome the pattern lines up with the end of this which is perfect because of that thing we call OCD which is not really it's just neatness and I was actually considering if it didn't line up with it the same way as it did at the other end I may even move this back here but we don't have to do that I just have to finish putting in the pattern now I'm actually really pleased with this I think it looks really good it's ever so simple and it's gonna look nice it's gonna look nice Okay, this thing is very nearly done now. I want to jump on this horse and ride down and see what it looks like. I think that looks good. Yeah, that looks really nice. I am happy with that. Now, I've realised at the moment there is actually a lot of grey around here as well, which kind of complements it. So that is all about to change because we're going to be changing these walls and this roof. Let's just put that down there and turn that on. Yes, there we go, done. So I've just been thinking, another good thing about having this pattern here line up with the racetrack, that I called it a racetrack again, it's a speedometer, uh, is that we can do the same thing with the walls on the side. So I think whatever it is we're going to build, the pattern that it will have, because it will be done with a pattern in segments, is going to line up with these lamps as well. And then the whole thing is going to be nice and neat, which is awesome. But this end over here, I think what we'll probably do is just have some these slabs come around the edge here and then maybe build a little bit of a border you know like a fence or something like that we're not going to do anything fancy and we'll tidy up the top bit as well uh, but we need to focus on the sides first so I'm going to go and figure out what it is we're going to be building you want to know something I am excited right now this is going to look great I've just done a very small portion of this but this does look really nice we have a sloped roof here going from one side over to the other so just imagine that what you see on this side is mirrored on that side over there now what we're going to do is have these little sections repeat over and over again and they also line up with the path in the middle so the pattern lines up so we have a lamp on the side where there isn't one in the middle for this segment of free and then for this segment of free where there is a lamp we have the oak wood this is dark oak wood by the way on either side now there is one thing here that I think actually I might change and we can do that quickly because it's ever so simple we have it like this and then we have one extra block of the oak at the top let's see if I can jump and put this yes like a pro <laughs> so that right there that actually looks about 10 times better I think than this one on the side so we will definitely have that change being made the whole way down uh, but the thing that I want to do here is alternate our colors so this looks really good at the moment I think this would probably also look good with regular wood and maybe the darker one but we're using the darker one just here so then we're gonna have another section so one two three we're gonna have a block there and there so we're gonna have the same thing going on with the stairs and in this section oh, <laughs> accidentally clicking on my mouse there we're gonna have a different color now I can't quite get my head round what to do here we can have alternating sections of color which I think will look good because they are nicely spaced out they're not too close together but what color should we go with and I really like the idea of using the acacia wood again it is really bold strong orange color but I really like how it looks but I think we're gonna take a, uh, a few different takes here you know going through some different colors and trying out some different things so I think what I will do is finish building this segment 
build one on the other side as well and then we'll play around with some different ones on the middle do some different combinations of colors on the wall and colors of the wood this bit going across and i think we're going to find something that will look real good oh my god <laughs> Look at that. That looks absolutely lovely. This is going to be a great tunnel. Just look at this. This is a really nice curved shape that we've got here. We've got the wood breaking up at decent intervals and the colour here I think is lovely. Now I know not everyone is a huge fan of the orange and its bold colour but for me that really works in this tunnel and I think it's maybe because we've got a hint of orange over here with the stained clay so it kind of ties the two sections together. But there are all sorts of different colour combinations we could do here. We're definitely going to be keeping this one as it is. And I am very tempted to say that I want to do this one right here. I think that looks really good. But we should definitely try this with a couple more colours. So we have spruce wood already up there. There's six in total, isn't there? Jungle wood is the one that I think would probably match the hardened clay colour here. But I don't really want to do jungle wood. I'm not the biggest fan of that. So I think we should try the regular oak wood and the birch wood. And we should pick a hardened clay colour that goes with them. Give that a try. And then I'm going to pick my favourite, which is probably going to be this one. But I do want to see what the other two look like. So I think I've got some tree chopping to do because I'm running out of the materials just to build these ones as it is. And also another thing has popped into my mind is where do we stop this, you know? Let's say we stop it here. How do we then transition it out into this area? I am not sure at the moment. I've got a couple of ideas, but we'll deal with that when we get to it. So right now we're going to swap this out, and I think we'll do the birchwood one first. All I'm going to say is yuck. <laughs> Look at that. I don't like it, i got to say. The, the ceiling is okay, but this pink, I think it's pink or white, white stained clay on the side, just, it doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. It doesn't blend in with the woods. And I'm thinking we should look for a different stained clay colour here. Let's jump over that, even though you can see <laughs> the amount of times I've walked over it. It's basically broken at the moment. It needs resetting. And so what are our choices? We do have brown stained clay. That's going to really kind of mix in with the, the wood that's next to it. And we could possibly use yellow. I've got some dye for that. In fact, let's grab that. And that would make pink. I don't think pink would really work. Mm, my options are limited at the moment. We could also go for blue. I think that turns into blue dye. That would be useful to know because lapis... Ah, yeah, it probably... Yeah, yeah, that's right. Light blue. Okay, yeah, because blue is lapis. We'll give that one a try as well. Right, so I'm going to craft these. My inventory is full. I need to sort this out, don't I? Okay, we got ourselves a few colours. And from a distance, I'm not too sure about the birchwood... I think I think the orange is such a big contrast, such a bold colour compared to the rest of what's going on around here. It kind of works to break it up really well. But this is just... Nope, that doesn't really do anything for me. Let's try the yellow. The yellow would match this colour a little bit more, so maybe that would give it something over here. Let's grab that. So yellow... Mm, slight improvement, slight improvement. I think maybe if you had like a, a red here, then the boldness of the two colours would match each other a little more. But again, not particularly feeling that. Let's try the brown. I've got a feeling we're going to go with the first one that I did. I really did like that. So let's... Oh, that's the wrong colour. <laughs> there we go. And brown. Mm, that's a little better than I thought it would be. That really is. That that actually kind of works, I think, because you've got light and dark, and then lighter and darker. And that kind of works, actually. That's really nice. I want to do that on the other side. It does mix in with the, uh, the wood a lot, but it does look good. So, let's do this. That is a nice alternative. That looks a lot better than I expected, but I think what we'll do next is replace all of this with oak wood and try a few colours and see what it looks like. I'm just getting some oak wood together and this tree it grew a little too close to the ground and then I noticed that the tall grass wasn't replaced so interesting little something there. The leaves won't replace tall grass. Probably probably never going to be useful that is it but <laughs> something I noticed. I gotta say that is really nice we replace the birch with the oak wood and it's just a little more pale. It mixes in a lot better. And now these two colours I think work better like that. 
Again, talking about the dark and the brighter, and then having the dark here and the bright there. With oak, that works so much better. And I think a lot of you are probably going to prefer this to what I want to do, which I really want to go with orange, but I think I'm going to take a little bit of time to think about this, because you don't want to go ahead and build a whole tunnel full of this stuff, which is going to take some time. We've got to get all the wood together and stuff as well, and then decide you're going to rip off of it out and change the colours. Yes, I definitely need to think about this one. So the oak wood looks really good here. I decided to go with that over the acacia. I went back and looked at the footage and although I really liked it, it was very bold and strong and a nice colour of orange, I felt like it would be too much when you have lots of alternating segments like this. You know, There's now a lot going on down the sides and I think with these nice earthly colours that kind of match each other it works really well. But it is now finished, we should sprint down to the other end and the next thing that I have to do is transition these into the outside. So this end down here I think is going to be fairly simple because the log at the top lines up with the edge here. But then we need to transition into this dirt and stone that we have over the edge. And I think the way to do this, oh, there we go, is to remove all of this stone here and up there as well. And have it so that when we have our two things like this coming down, we've got the stairs in the middle, then we're just going to repeat that pattern going out to the edge here. And actually we only need a couple of blocks to do that. If it was bigger then there would be a lot more of what I'm about to do, going across and meeting the dirt like that, and then you'd have a load here as well, which I think will work really well. And on the other side there's not as much dirt, so what I might do is remove a little bit of the dirt, maybe on this side as well, so there is more of a transition, but that works really well. I like how that looks. I think we might need an extra block just there. Kind of looks odd without one. Uh, but down at the other end is a different story and I'm really not sure what to do down the end here. And I might actually leave it for another day because I'm running out of time at the moment. Time is a factor when, you know, spending ages digging and doing all this sort of stuff. Um, down the end here the problem that we have is this edge curves around the side. So I was thinking maybe we could just build this thing and have it go to wherever the blocks are above it so it kind of curves around the side a little bit. But that could look odd and any alternatives to that I just don't have any. So as of right now I think I'm just going to leave this like that and we can deal with this another day because we need to build a little balcony area over here as well. So I will just go down to the front, we'll finish that up and then we'll figure out what we're doing next. Well, I am really pleased with how that has turned out. It looks ever so good, doesn't it? I'm really happy with that. The entrance, the way it transitions, the tunnel itself, this track right here, very simple, just the stone and the stone bricks. And I've now activated that. Let's reset it. I'm happy with all of that. That turned out really well. But there is something really important that we need to do for this. When I was last here, I removed the signs that explained how to take the amount of items that you get and then calculate the blocks per second your horse travels at and the idea was just to move it to somewhere else I got distracted I forgot to put it back up I made a note of it and the whole time this thing has been here people have no idea how to use it and calculate their own speed so something very important I need to do is put up a sign somewhere and where exactly I'm going to do that I'm not sure but maybe over here near the entrance would be a good idea because you know if someone's coming over here and they want to check out what is this place, what's with these stables and all of this overgrowth everywhere and um, they'll see a big sign saying horse speedometer and then the instructions will be on there and I think the best place to put that is right here so yeah we'll put it just somewhere right here and I'll probably go around and maybe put down a few more different blocks of these types as well just to kind of finish up this entrance area. Oh it is looking good here this place is pretty much finished as I said I put down a few more blocks not too many and quite a few actually just in front of the stable which looks really good because you can have lots of horses walking through there and turning the grass into mud obviously this is Minecraft it doesn't quite work like that but this is the sign that I put over at the front here it looks pretty cool and I'm gonna whiz through this as quick as I can and now I realize that actually we need something to stand on here so I have a half slab maybe I'll leave a half slab there for whoever wants to come over and read this so horse speedometer Press the red button before using, wait until both lamps are off. Then you are ready to run your horse from this side to the end. When you have made it to the end, turn around and head back to the lamps to see how many items are in the hopper. Take this number and divide it by 52, so that's the amount of items. Uh, then take this new number and divide 70 by it. The number you are left with is your horse's BPS, that's blocks per second, sumer. 
So hopefully those instructions were easy to follow. Let me know. Let me know down in the comments if you think I did a good job there because I'm thinking about redoing this, which I don't have the time to do at the moment, but I want these instructions to be as clear as possible because you do have to get your calculator out and do a little bit of math. But there we go. This thing is up to scratch. We have built the tunnel. There's still a little bit of work to be down to be done <laughs> down at the end. Uh, but there is one more thing that I want to do this episode. So we now run a business on Hermitcraft. I was uh, the one to first move into the business district and all I built was that community smelter thing, foundry, whatever you want to call it. And so I haven't actually had to deal with running a business yet and I just realised that I need to you know, check my shop from time to time and keep on top of things. So while I'm over here in this area we should definitely go and see if we've had any customers and there are also a couple of things I need to do around here as well because I didn't even put up a sign or anything like that and so now other people are going to come over here and wonder what on earth's going on so we need a sign at the front here which I'm going to add in a moment and then a sign down on the building as well and do you know what at some point I think I might redo this little bit here at the front to me it does feel a little bit closed in and I was reading all of your feedback in the comments and a lot of people were saying that we should move these over to the side a little bit because they kind of obscure the view of the roof here and the roof is the main feature that's what looks really nice about this building and I gotta say I love how this building looks very happy with that but if we go inside here our book has been rotated so someone's been in here and it looks like we have our first customer because there is a diamond in here and we're only supposed to have one of these books in here for people to sign I don't know why I put two in there and this is the empty one let's try the other one and we have a order from Biffa. So one diamond paid, please deliver your finest hay bales to the bakery. My horse, Dinnerbone, will be ever will be ever grateful. Yes, ever so grateful is what I could hear in my head. Anyway, uh, we need to just delete that from the book now, I guess. We've got Biffa's message. We're going to deliver the hay bales to him. And at the moment, all of my stock is over at the wasteland. So I've got to go all the way back over there and get some hay bales and then bring them back over here. But I think when I come back, we're going to set up a little chest or something hidden underground so that we can store the hay bales over here which makes more sense I think so yeah let's uh, let's head back to the wastelands so I've raced through the nether and I've raced all the way back and I brought with me a couple of ender chests as well we're gonna put an ender chest in our shop because some of our customers may want to use that obviously I've watched Biffa's video so I picked up on some of his suggestions uh, I need to actually polish this up a bit and I don't have the materials at the moment because you're going to be able to see some of what's underneath there so I'll probably put glowstone and then fill in the sides as well so that's something I'll do at another point but this is all of the hay bale that I have I have been working really hard I've left I think another three stacks back at the wastelands I've been doing tons and tons of nano farming and that is what we have a really big supply there and there's a potential for diamonds here if we think about it. Each one of these is two, so we got two there, and that's four. And we have eight, ten, fourteen. So 28 diamonds we could make with that, which I think is awesome. That's almost half a stack, which is pretty cool. So anyway, we need to deliver this to Biffa's Bakery, to Dinnerbone outside of here. And I was thinking on the way over, do you know what would be funny? If we were to actually place down like a crate of the hay bales outside the shop. Now... You can place these down, so why not? But it might look cool as well. We could put a little sign saying, you know, it's from the shop, and then someone will come past here and see this and probably wonder, what on earth is going on? What are all these hay bales for? Where are they from? Where can I get some? <laughs> Hopefully, I say. Uh, we're kind of running out of room here. I don't want to make a mountain here at the front. <laughs> and I don't think I've arranged it in any particular way that makes it look nice. Let's, uh, let's redo a couple of these here and put them like that. <laughs> I'm really overthinking this. There we go. Awesome. Yes, a big delivery of hay bales. I kind of feel like I'm griefing, I've got to be honest, it feels a little odd. Um, but let's put hay bales delivered. Um, hmm. So, one order of hay bales delivered, signed from Asuma, and I doubt Biffa will be expecting that outside of his shop. <laughs> I don't know what he's going to make of it, but I think it's funny to uh, to do that. And I'm going to go grab a torch and put it on top, just in case the light levels here aren't good enough. We do not want mobs spawning in this area. 
Uh, but I think that wraps things up for this episode. And next episode we'll probably be continuing with something else to do with the horses. You remember I said there are three new projects that I want to start. And we've done the first one which is just to finish off the horse speedometer. But that is it for this episode. So as always if you have enjoyed it please do leave a like. It will always be appreciated. But thank you for watching and I will catch you next time.